Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This is another part in my ongoing series, Stargazing Under Dark Skies, Part 6, Craters of the Moon National Monument. Craters of the Moon National Monument is located in southern Idaho, 18 miles from Arco, Idaho, on Highway 20, and about 160 miles from Boise, Idaho. Arco is a small town of just a thousand people, but it's the closest town to Craters of the Moon with lodging. The DK Motel and the Arco Inn are modest lodging there. The only other option for lodging is the Lava Flow Campground near the Visitor Center, which has 42 first-come, first-served sites, open May to November. Other than that, Twin Falls, Idaho is an hour and a half drive, and it has ample lodging and amenities. There's evidence of Paleo-Indians passing through this area 12,000 years ago, and later the Shoshonean people built trails in Craters of the Moon and hunted there and gathered stones for arrowhead points. In the 1800s, European Americans passed by on the Oregon Trail, heading west, but they avoided the lava fields in Craters of the Moon. In 1901 and 1923, U.S. geologists mapped the area, and later naturalist Robert Limbert traveled through the area and gave lectures and publicized articles about it, eventually leading to its establishment as a national monument by President Calvin Coolidge in 1923. And by the way, the only difference in the United States between a national monument and a national park is that a national monument can be designated by the president without the approval of Congress pursuant to the 1906 Antiquities Act, whereas a national park can only be designated by Congress and thereafter signed into law by the president. Both national parks and national monuments have the same protections. And many national parks started out as national monuments, such as Pinnacles National Park in California and Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. The highest designation, though, in the United States is wilderness area, and only Congress can approve a wilderness area. Wilderness areas cannot be developed. In 1970, Congress designated much of Craters of the Moon National Monument as wilderness area. And in 2002, it was designated a national preserve and vastly expanded by President Bill Clinton to over 400,000 acres. In 2017, Craters of the Moon was designated an International Dark Sky Park. In 1923, geologist Howard Stearns described the area as the surface of the moon as seen through a telescope. The park has 43,000 acres of lava fields, lava forms, spatter cones, lava caves, and huge craters created by volcanism. But where are the volcanoes? Well, the area was created by repeated eruptions of lava from a 52-mile-long great rift or great fissure in the earth that began flowing 15,000 years ago and last erupted just 2,000 years ago, and it's still active today. While the park is mostly lava fields, it's not barren. It's dotted with dwarf buckwheat plants and limber pines and other plants that dot the eerie landscape after the snow melts in June and during the occasional rains. The area lies at 5,900 feet above sea level and is very arid with an average annual precipitation of only 15 to 20 inches per year, enough to support sagebrush community. It gets very hot there in June, July, and August, and it's cold and snowy in the winter time, but it's open for snowshoeing during that time. Although the park closes the loop road, you're still allowed to enter the park and you can get a winter camping permit. So it's possible to camp there year round and stargaze there year round. As a place to visit, I give Craters of the Moon five stars. It's fascinating and a beautiful place in a stark way, as long as it doesn't erupt while you're there. And as a place to stargaze, it's incomparable. I give it five stars. It's only Bortle 2. I'm not sure why. There's nothing nearby except the Idaho National Laboratory, which I guess gives off a lot of light. 
at night because other than that, it's very dark there. There's an open view of the sky. It's not blocked because the only trees are limber pines, which don't get very tall. And you have a clear view to the horizon in all directions. The campground is open and it has nice views of the sky. It's arid, so there's low humidity and high elevation, making it ideal for stargazing. It's a great place to stargaze. If you're ever traveling in southern Idaho, I highly recommend a visit to Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve in Idaho. That's it for now. I'll see y'all soon. Till then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.